Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about the impacts of microplastics on your nervous system, specifically your brain. So let's get started. Here is a brief outline of this presentation. In part A, I'm going to talk about the plastic pollution problem and why we should care about this huge problem and how it's impacting us. In part B, I'm going to go into more details about the specific impacts of micro and nanoplastics on our neurons and how these tiny, tiny pieces of plastics could be impacting your health. So here is a brief overview of the plastic pollution problem. If you didn't know, we pollute a lot of plastics into the oceans and the lakes or ecosystems in general. In fact, it is estimated that we dump over 12 million tons of plastic into oceans each year. To put that into perspective for you, that's every minute worth of a garbage truck getting dumped into our oceans. The problem begins when these huge chunks of plastics, for example, fishing nets, straws, plastic water bottles, and those types of things get into the water and due to natural weathering and erosion processes, these huge chunks of plastics slowly degrade and become smaller and smaller and smaller. So at the end, they form these tiny, tiny pieces of plastic which you can't see by your eyes, but they are still there because they just don't disappear. They are just a smaller. And to make matters worse, they have been shown to biomagnify in the traffic levels. So they actually accumulate inside the organisms. And if you could imagine, for example, a plankton or an algae takes up the plastics and then a smaller fish come and eat the algae or the plankton, and then they have even more plastics or a higher concentration of plastics inside their bodies compared to the algae. And then bigger fish come and eat the smaller fish and they still have a lot a higher concentration of plastics compared to the smaller fish and the algae. And at the end of the day, us humans come and eat the bigger fish and now we even have more or a higher concentration of plastics inside our own body compared to the other org organisms so this might be surprising because we don't even live in the water but this problem is impacting us a lot more than for example let's say algae or planktons or other small organisms because you're at the top of the food chain and we eat other organisms and another thing that we should that I will talk about later, but I will mention briefly, is that microplastics and nanoplastics, there is a lot of evidence that shows that these types of compounds can actually cross the blood brain barrier and impact our neurons in very negative ways, as we will see. So as I mentioned, you might be wondering, oh, how does the microplastics even get to our central nervous system or brain in the first place? So basically what has been shown in mice when scientists were doing experiments, they basically exposed mice to high amounts of micro and nanoplastics. And what they saw was that the blood brain barrier was actually damaged in the mice that were exposed to high levels of micro and nanoplastics. Specifically, what they saw is if you look at the tight junctions of the blood brain barrier demonstrated by the diagrams, the occludin proteins get damaged over time and they allow the blood and they make the blood brain barrier lose its integrity over time. And these microplastics and obviously other compounds can cross more readily through the blood brain barrier. Also, another mechanism that is thought to allow plastics or nano nanoplastics to enter the brain is, for example, through transcytosis or for example, maybe an astrocyte is taking glucose or other nutrition for the neurons from the blood bloodstream or the blood vessels and these nanoplastics are just hanging out beside the nutrition or the glucose molecules and since they are super super tiny they might accidentally get introduced inside the brain another exciting field of research that has only been recently explored is that there is 
actually some evidence that these nanoplastics or microplastics don't even have to reach our brain in order to negatively impact our brain and nervous system. They can actually cause dysbiosis in our gut or a small or large intestine by impacting the microbiome or like the bacteria living there and what happens is this interrupts the signals that the microbiome sends to the brain and more on this later in the presentation so now i'm just going to give you guys some examples of how microplastic and nanoplastics specifically impact the brain Scientists were actually really interested in how these microplastics in the environment could affect the brain or the memory formation. So they used mice models and they gave them object recognition tests. In order to briefly explain the object recognition test, if you don't know what that is, is for example, if you look at the sample phase, we have a ma mouse and we introduce it to a novel object, for example, in this case, a hat or like a small toy, and we let it like explore the toy for a couple of minutes or maybe even 10 minutes, depends on the ex ex a specific experiment. And after 10 minutes, we let it, we take the object out and we let the mice just hang in the cage for a couple of hours and then reintroduce the same object that we introduced to it but also introduce another novel object that uh, uh, that the mouse has never seen before basically what happens is then we can test the memory of the mouse in the test phase if the mouse is exploring the old object compared rather than exploring the new object then we know that the mouse hasn't formed a lot of memories so its memory formation is impacted because if it remembered the old object then it wouldn't even focus a lot on the old object it would just primarily pay attention to the new object because the old object wouldn't be interesting so in this case for example if you see the hat it's like an old object and we reintroduce it into the cage and if we see the mouse is still interested in the hat compared to the toy tiger which is a new object then we know that the mouse has actually forgotten what the hat was or how it looked like after a couple of hours then we know that like this mouse has deficiencies in its memory formation system because we would expect a healthy mouse to focus on the tiger the toy tiger because it should remember how the hat looks like because it's an old object and basically what happened in the studies was um, mouse that were exposed to microplastics or nanoplastics in their diets they consistently performed worse in object recognition tests, in indicating that they have trouble forming proper memories, unfortunately. If those studies weren't like convincing you, then we could also talk about the Morris water maze experiments that scientists also have done. Basically, in this study, there are like two groups of mice and one of, one of the groups is exposed to micro or nanoplastics and they are introduced into the Morris water maze. If you don't know what that test is, it basically measures a special, a special learning and memory. And what happens is you put a mouse in a, a small pool of water and there is a hidden platform that the mouse can swim to so it can climb uh, can climb out of the bucket of water and rescue itself but they don't know where the platform is but after a couple of trials most mouse like begin to learn oh the platform is actually on this side of the pool so they so they keep on taking shorter shorter and shorter routes so their time of struggling in the pool decreases because they already know where the platform is and they don't have to go and swim randomly to find it. And what happened was mice that were exposed to high concentrations of microplastic or nanoplastics also performed consistently worse on the Morris water maze test. In fact, the amount of exposure of microplastics 
directly correlated with the test results. So for example, if you could imagine, for example, maybe the left side of this diagram is the mouse that are healthy and can form proper spatial memory. And on the right, if you see like the mouse is confused and it's like swimming all over the bucket, even after multiple trials. And that mouse is an example of a mouse that could have been exposed to microplastics for a long time. So it has lower amounts of lower amounts of spatial learning and memory, which is really concerning because it shows that microplastics can damage our brain. So now to give you guys a molecular perspective and get into the details. Scientists were actually interested in how exactly the microplastics could be impacting our memory formation. And once again, they used mice models to experiment these. And what happened is that they discovered that microplastics were actually found in hippocampal tissue of mice. So another evidence that microplastics are passing through the blood brain barrier and impacting our neurons. Another interesting observation was that, that in mice that were exposed to microplastics, expression of IEG genes, more on that later, is lower and in some cases was even expressed at improper points compared to their healthy mouse group. Specifically, if you want to get specific, then the dentate gyrus and CA2 slash 3 subregions were particularly affected. If you don't know what those regions are, they are basically regions in the hippocampus. And even in one paper, the scientists showed that there, those regions were less active in mouse that were exposed to microplastics compared to healthy mice. So as I mentioned, let's get to the IEGs. If you don't know what IEGs are, they are basically they basically stand for immediate early genes, and they are a cluster of genes that are activated in neurons in response to learning. And they have like a wide variety of functions, and basically they regulate a lot of pathways. But what you should know is that they are involved with long-term potentiation and AMPA receptor expression. If you don't know what those are, they are basically required for proper memory formation and learning. And what is interesting is that aberrant expression of IEGs has been shown or linked to psychiatric disorders as well as learning troubles so maybe maybe microplastics could be impacting for example our mood or could even be like a risk factor to developing psychiatric disorders but more studies are needed to actually develop such correlations but it's an interesting thought another factor that I should mention about microplastics is that microplastics have actually been shown to inter induce a pro-inflammatory environment and what scientists have actually seen in mice models is that microglials which are basically your brain's macrophages or immune system they are getting activated when mice are chronically exposed to microplastics specifically they we saw that like the scientists saw that mice release pro-inflammatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor and interleukin interleukin 1 just after 8 hours of microplastic microplastics exposure Another thing that you should also know about the pro-inflammatory response is that this the pro-inflammatory response causes the blood-brain barrier to lose its integrity even more. So that could also be like a positive feedback loop. The more microplastics you're exposed to, the more compromised your blood-brain barrier. And then because your blood-brain barrier is compromised, then more microplastics. And as you can see, like the cycle continues and continues as more microplastics are allowed to enter your brain. <laughs> 
Another factor about the in pro-inflammatory response is that the scientists actually saw that um, that ox there is a lot of oxidative stress, especially in the hippocampus of the mice, and that's also damaging your neurons because the oxidative substances or like the toxic substances are impacting your neurons, and they can cause cognitive decline and even your neurons die. As, and as you might have already known, when your neurons get damaged or die, they don't come back. They are permanent. Another thing that, as I mentioned, that you're going to talk about is the impacts of microplastics and potential dysbiosis. If you don't know what dysbiosis is, it's basically when the microbiome in your gut is altered and it's no longer healthy or what it's like supposed to look like and studies have shown that microplastics exposure in like the colons of mice indicates chronic inflammation and basically what that means is that there is a lot of inflammation in your colon or large intestine and that's impacting the microbiomes living in your intestines and what happens is basically it has been shown that the vagus nerve can be impacted by the microbiome for example that's how they come the microbiome or the, like the bacteria communicates with your brain it's largely through the vagus nerve and what happens is that in this particular study the scientists had two groups of mice one went under a vagotomy, which is basically cutting the vagus nerve. The other group underwent a sham surgery procedure to serve as a, like the control for the experiment. And what happened was that these groups of mice were exposed to microplastics. And what happened was the group that received the vagotomy, which is basically the which is basically when scientists cut the vagus nerve is they this that group displayed better memory formation and learning in the maze water test so that indicates maybe the microbiome is affected by the microplastics that the mice are injecting and the microbiome was impacting the brain not through directly accessing the brain but through the vagus nerve they were sending improper signals so when they could cut the vagus nerve the microbiome in the intestines could no longer communicate with the brain and that caused and essentially that caused when you cut the vagus nerve they couldn't communicate with the brain and that caused them to have better memories which means that perhaps the microbiome are impacting the brain when they are exposed to microplastics and more studies are getting are underway to see if this is actually like a reproducible result or not and we have to see about that thank you for watching make sure to like and subscribe our video if you enjoyed it